hey, welcome, welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. What I do know is that these earrings are a little bit of a clue to the collab that I'm doing today. I'm doing a collab with a number of a very talented individuals and I need to read this off of here to make sure I get it absolutely right. We are the Skeleton Crew multi-channel collab Twisted Palette Bingo. So it seemed appropriate to pop my skeleton hand earrings in. Um, I will have everybody listed in the description below because at the time I'm filming this there's still some people that we've not heard back from whether they're doing it or not so I don't want to mention everybody who's confirmed and then have somebody else confirm and them not being mentioned because that would be nasty and rude and I would hate to do that to anybody. But this is a twisted palette bingo in that we have to pull six shades from one palette and create a spooky look with it. So as you can see, mine is definitely gothically smoky. And rather than the mad cat lady, I appear to be the mad bat lady. So, if you want to find out exactly how I achieved this look, then my friend, you are in precisely the right place. Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, and enjoy. Because after watching this one, You've got everybody else's films to look forward to as well. I guarantee at least one of them will give you some inspiration for your Halloween look this year. Enjoy. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Right, I would have told you in the intro that this is a mini collab. I will list everybody who is taking part in the description box. I'm not going to list them off in case we get any extras coming in because I don't want to miss anybody. Um, so this is a, it, it's kind of a Halloween-y, spooky kind of, hence the devil's horns because, well, why not really? Um, and it's a, like a palette bingo where you choose six shades and use them in order. So, because my internet is playing up, I pulled the six shades off camera because otherwise we'd be here for bloody ever waiting for my internet to catch up, which is marvellous. So, I'm going to put a picture here. I'm using the Revolution Blackout, Reloaded Blackout, which is this one, which is why I don't need to buy the Colourpop Smoke Sessions, whatever it's called, because this is £4 from Revolution, and it's got all the shades plus a few more. also means I don't have to buy the Lime Crime one because it's got all the shades plus a few more. I've even put spooky ooky earrings on, look, little claws. Normally I always forget to change my earrings and wear the same ones day in day out but today I thought no I'm going to put spooky earrings on. So that's the um, the colours I pulled in order and I've swatched them here. So one, two, three, four, five and six. So we're going to get a nice 
grungy, deep kind of look going on. So, my face is washed, moisturised, SPF'd and primed. I'm just going to clean these off before I manage to wipe them up the side of my face, which is what I managed to do the other day. Um, this is still a teaching channel and combined that with my chronic pain I don't blend as quickly as a lot of people do so if I'm not blending quickly enough for you there is a speed widget out there feel free to speed me up I will not be offended I very often have to do that in order to get through all the films that I intend to watch in a day so let's get you zoomed in and um, I'm actually going to show you today how I put my eye primer on because I have been asked about how I apply that. So let's get you zoomed in. And I can also start talking you through eye shapes while I'm doing it. Now, I've used this Crow and Pebble um, primer ever since I first tried it. I get a fluffy brush like this, roll it around in the primer, and then just bung it on and spread it out. Can't see a damn thing, I hope I'm still on screen. Regular viewers will know I'm actually blind in the eye that is open. Oh yeah, I was just about on screen, that's good. And that is literally how I apply my eye primer. And what I love about this primer is that it goes on dry. It's not sticky. You don't have to set it. You can blend on it straight away, which means you get full colour impact without actually having to worry about pat, 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 pat first unless of course you're using a pigment if you're just using an eyeshadow you can start blending straight away this is the lightest one they do the white in shade cotton the deepest end they've got six shades at the moment the deepest end is a chocolate brown and a black and then there's three skin tone shades in between you can buy a tester pot which is basically the same size as this but it's half filled and they were kind enough to give me a discount code I don't earn from it but I absolutely adore this it's um, well it's basically the only eye primer that I use now I never touch my MAC soft ochre paint pot um, I've already already emptied the tester pot as you can see completely empty and now on to my second one. So, yay. But yeah, that is how I apply my primer, for those of you who asked. Because obviously with nails like this, poking myself in the eye, <laughs> it's a regular occurrence. Now, when I look straight ahead, with my brows relaxed, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. So I haven't got hooded eyes, I've got what's known as deep set eyes and they are often mistaken for each other. Now I'm going to talk you through how to work out whether you have a hooded eye or a deep set eye and then I'm going to give you a workaround for each type so that you can follow any tutorial that you see on YouTube or anywhere else for that matter. It's only if your static lid completely covers your mobile lid right down to your lashes that you have a full or a half hooded eye or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. If I demonstrate with this one, if I cover my visible mobile lid and close my eye, you can see I've got as much lid space again that tucks back away, if not more. And if I cover the static lid and do the same, you can see I've got static lid there that folds back in too. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that people with hooded eyes get, so I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid rather than just through the socket. 
when I'm wearing glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch right through the middle. So, if you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, and sketch on your static lid where you need your new crease to fall. Obviously that's going to reduce the space between your new crease and your brow, so use slightly smaller blending brushes. Um, I don't normally go up to my brow with the colour unless I'm doing an editorial look, but if you are very pushed on space here you may find you have to go right up to the brow. If you've got deep set eyes like myself, all you have to do is when we're blending a colour through the crease, every so often stop and just check it's visible when our eyes are open. So you can see that's two very different workarounds, which is why it's important to know exactly which type of eye you have. Right, let's get going with this tutorial. Now, as we pictures, I know which colour I've got to start with. Right, I've got to start with uh, shade number three. And it looks like none of these are pigments, so that's good. So I'm going to start off by going in with a Jeffrey Morphe JS5 brush, which is a big, round, fluffy blender. And I'm going to start off with that up here. And I'm going to very gently buff that colour across. Now, I do circular movements, as you can see. Going towards the nose, I go in this direction. And in the middle, I bounce a bit. And then reverse the direction, coming back out. Think of it as the Viennese waltz of eyeshadow application. Natural turns, reverse turns, and a little bit of a fleckle just there. Because I'm 45 and I've lost 14 stone, 14, 15 stone. So the skin on my eyelids moves. Um, and by doing it like this, I'm holding the brush right at the end so I'm putting as little pressure on as possible. You actually move the skin around very, very gently. So you don't get any tiger striping or barcoding effect. I'm just building that colour up a little bit. That's what I like about these reloaded palettes. You can start off very, very soft, but they do build up. Because I struggle here and here with dry patches. And I can very often find it very difficult to get colours to build up. But so far, the only one I've found that I've had any difficulty with on these reloaded palettes is the one that is the dupe for the Norvina palette. And do the same thing on this eye. This is very much. 80s makeup to me because through the 80s I did late 80s early 90s um, I was very much Robert Palmer addicted to love models in the background um, if you've not seen that video where have you been it's iconic um, basically you know grey smoky eye pale lip pale skin and then bright red lips was always my go-to for a night out. Actually, to be fair, it was my go-to for daytime as well for a long time. Uh, the only real difference was that I'd use like a brown lipstick during the day and then a rib on for the evening. I'm just sitting back and checking that the shapes look the same because I'm not James Charles, I don't photoshop anything, I don't use filters and your eyes are not symmetrical <clears throat> so sometimes you have to do two slightly different shapes to get them to look the same side by side just going to build that colour up a little bit more there lovely Right. Uh, I've got a clean washcloth here that I'm just going to buff this on. All right, now I need to go into number two. I don't know if we're meant to pull these and then use them without seeing what they were in order, but oops. I'm using the colours in the order that I pulled them though, so. 
Right, so going into number two with the same brush. This is slightly deeper. It really doesn't bother me that I'm getting fallout because I do my base afterwards anyway. Um, I do tend to get more fallout on my other eye because that was pulled around an awful lot when I was like five years old at the ophthalmic hospital when they were trying to work out why I wasn't seeing properly out of it. And you can see I've got super, super deep creasing there. There's that perfect example of the barcoding that I was talking about. Um, but what I tend to do with that eye, because I don't want to pull it around too much and make those creases any deeper than they already are, whatever the deepest colour is that I'm putting through the crease, <clears throat> I'll stretch the lid out and uh, just make sure I've not got any barcoding. So now these two are different shades in the palette, but they look very similar once they're on the eye. these two here. So you can see this almost has like a greeny undertone to it, one that I'm putting on now. But it's not really showing up when we're blending it. It may do when we're back at a distance possibly. I know some, some shadows are odd like that. They only really show up when you're this close. They're almost like a, like a duochrome in that you have to be in the right light to see the undertone. So I'm just building this up and blending it in with the first shade I put on. I love Halloween, it's my absolute favourite type of year. So tell me, what is your Halloween plans for the year? Do you celebrate? Do you celebrate the Wiccan Selane or Selane, depending on how you pronounce it? Oh, I really hope the neighbour's screaming isn't appearing on my film. I wanted to start filming a couple of hours earlier, but they've been so busy screaming at each other. It sounded like World War Three was erupting. And I've had to stop filming before because when they were that loud, it was being picked up on the camera. Um, I'd love to talk about some of the people in the collab, but like I said, I don't want to talk about some and then have someone else join and risk not talking about them. But suffice to say, everybody in this collab is extremely skilled, and I class myself as very lucky to be invited to take part in it. buffing that through and blending it in with the lighter grey. Just starting to pull it down a little bit at the edge there. Oh, I'm probably going to go in with the black through the crease because that is the deepest one. I love a good smoky eye. I think that was next door moving furniture. That's the other side. Right, now I went in with that lighter grey, didn't it? So I'm going to clean this brush off and I'm going to go in with uh, what's the lighter grey and then the pink that it pulled. So I'm going to go in with this JS24, which is actually a lip brush. And I'm going to pick up some of shade number 10. Uh, never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush. If you're going to wet the brush, wet it afterwards. I'm just using a setting spray. You can use any kind of moisture. You can use moisturising one like Max Fix Plus or Mario Badescu. You can use priming spray, setting spray, finishing spray. You can even just use water. Um, I've got a little mirror here so I can look into it so hopefully you can still see what I'm doing. I'm just going to pop this just onto the inner part of the lid. Mm. 
like so. And then I'm going to dry the brush off on the cloth and go back in again. I don't like using colour switches, I much prefer using a cloth, microfibre or a washcloth. Um, especially if you're using natural hair brushes, I just find they are much gentler on the actual brush itself. Right now I do have to, how far across did I take that? Just about there, so not very far. Um, I do have to stretch this lid out, otherwise what happens is the shimmer builds up loosely in those deep creases and I end up with it cascading down my eye through the day because it's not been packed in firmly. Do not do that if you absolutely don't have to. Just put that in there like that. Clean the brush off. I think the next one that I went into, yeah. The next one I went into is number 15, which was the red. I was hoping it was going to put either the red or the gold, I will admit. So I was quite pleased to see that come up. So again, clean the cloth. Pack the pigment on. I might pack it onto both sides, actually. Like so. And then... I nearly finished with this one, that's good. It's a way to finish up setting sprays if you're not really keen on them. If they don't really extend the wear, it's great to use up for, you know, wetting pigments and stuff. So then I'm going to go in with this on the remaining part of the eye. I don't think I'm going to go completely to the corner because I think I'm going to put some black right in the very edge. This is the difficulty of having to do it in order because obviously normally I would have done the black first so I'm going to have to be so careful when I'm doing that not to overshower these colours that I've put in. That's going to be fun. Clean the brush. If you're wondering which spray I'm using, it's the I Heart Revolution uh, Vanilla and Coconut. I liked it, it made me feel like I was in the middle of a beach somewhere with a pina colada in my hand, but it didn't really do much in terms of prolonging the wear of my makeup. To be honest, there's only really two that I have found that will do that. And that's the All Nighter by Urban Decay, but that dries my skin out too much. And the Gerard Cosmetics. Which is why um, I was happy to accept when Jen Gerard was offering discount codes. So I do have a Gerard Cosmetics discount code, and I do earn from that one. Everybody who's got a Gerard Cosmetics discount code earns from it. Um, because Jen is just extremely fair to people like that and she's a big enough business that she can do that because a lot of smaller businesses if they offer a discount code it cuts into their profit margin so much that they just can't afford to to give you any kickback but that's fine the majority of my discount codes that I've had initially were non-affiliated a couple of them have since turned into affiliated ones but the majority of them started off as not affiliated and I don't have a problem with that. It really doesn't bother me if I earn from them or not. The more important thing is that, you know, you get a discount on products that I think are worth buying. I've only ever had two pieces of PR. And they're both from um, September Rose. Alright. Do I want to go with this one? I don't want to go. I think I want to go with a slightly smaller brush than the one I've initially pulled. Right, I'm going to go in with the JS12. It is clean. It's just stained. 
Okay, now I'm going into the black. I'm going into shade number seven. I'm going to have to really tap off with this one. Because this is the one that I'm going to now put very carefully through the crease. And then very, very carefully blend this out. I'm really just sort of softening the edge of it because I don't want it to go too high up the eye. But also I don't want it to overtake the colours on the lid. And then pop some black on the outer corner here. This is turning out. You can see because I've been doing it long enough, I kind of know how high I need to take it to um, to be visible above the crease when my eyes are open. Now I'm just blend, 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 blend. Tiniest, tiniest little circles you possibly can do. Just to keep it contained through that crease. And there you can see the barcoding that I was talking about. Like I said, I get a lot more fallout with this eye simply because the skin on this lid is looser because it was pulled around so much and we're talking 40 years ago you know I'm 45 years old now and this is damage that was done when I was five um, and it didn't really show until I hit I suppose 35 36 it really started to show prior to that there wasn't a huge great amount of difference between them right I like that I really like that. Right, I've got a pad here with some micellar water on. And I'm just going to tidy up the edges with. This is another great reason to do your base afterwards. Yes, you could put tape down, but I don't like doing that because for the tape to be strong enough that you're not going to get any eyeshadow go under it, it's going to pull when you take it off of your skin and you don't want to tug on the skin around your eyes at all because it is the most delicate skin on your body and it will get damaged and you really, really don't want that. Right, I'm going to pause you just while I put some base products on and get my brows on etc and I will be straight back. Now for you there will be absolutely no delay at all. For me I will see you the very next time that I press the record button. And I am back. Right, <clears throat> I'm going with uh, this brush which you will have seen before. And I will go into again the fifth shade that I pulled which was shade number seven, that black that I used through the crease here. And I'm going to run that along underneath the lower lash line. Just connecting it up with the outside there. Clean that brush off. And then the 
final shade that I pulled was number nine. So, this is the Tarte Graveyard Girl brush that came with the palette. I love it because it's flat topped but it's chunky so it's great for getting under your lower lash line. And I'm going to go in with shade number nine to really buff out and soften the lower lash. I always flinch this side because obviously I haven't got any peripheral vision of the number of times I poke myself in the blooming eye with a brush. It happens very regularly, folks. Very regularly, indeed. Ooh, I like that. Now, I need to make it a little bit spooky. But first I'm going to pop um, some highlight on and I'm going to grab my Nikki Ofra glazed donut and this mm. is a lip brush that I bought from eBay probably a decade ago I'm going to pop that under the tail end of the brow on the inner corner running it underneath the tear duct and blend it in with the colours that I have run underneath my eye now I know what you're thinking it's not exactly very spoopy yet is it I got from Oh My Glitter last year, I believe, at Halloween. But so I'm going to shake some out onto here, along with a bit of glitter glue, and uh, see if I can't spoopify this look up a little bit. back on nice and tight. Right, now the brush that I use for the glitter glue is one of the myriad of um, nail brushes that I bought. This was a set of about six and it only cost me a fiver. It's designed for doing like nail acrylic but it's really really great for accuracy and I'm going to go in with the NYX Glitter Primer which I've not used for a while so I'm just going to squeeze the first bit out to make sure any hard bits have gone um, I've tried the Too Faced Glitter Primer whichever we raise about because I got a sample of it and I still rate this one better for those of you who might be wondering and then I'm going to get a little bit of the glitter glue just pop some Just above the tail of my brow there. And then maybe another one. Just 
then it's time to get batty. My mother-in-law actually has bats in her attic at home. Which is awesome because very often we'll be at theirs having a barbecue or something in the summer and just as dusk falls you'll see you'll hear them more than anything you'll, you'll just hear the, the flutter of their wings and I'm going to do the same this side I was going to do you know, like the spider web and the spider coming down from it from the eyeliner. But I've done that before. I wanted to do something just a little bit different this time. And these little bats are just so adorable. I mean they're subtle enough, you could probably get away with them at work. If you're working somewhere that doesn't allow you to get dressed up on Halloween. I know a lot of places like supermarkets and stuff, at least here in the UK, encourage their staff to get dressed up at Halloween. And likewise, there's also a lot of places that don't let you. And I just think, just popping a few of these, just above the end of your brow. can be just enough to make you feel Halloweeny without your bosses going crack a jack at you. What do we think? I think I need a few more this side. do have a discount code for Oh My Glitter. That is also listed in the description box with everything else. I think that is so cute. Hmm. Right. I'm going to pause you one last time while I do mascara, highlight, lippy, hair, and I'll be back with a finished look. See you instantly. Uh, and back, I added a couple of extra little bats just to over here to sort of. When I did stuff like this once before with crystals, and I put a crystal on this beauty mark, it fell off. So I decided to pop the bats this side for a beauty mark instead. I used the new Revolution Blowout High Volume Mascara with Cannabis Sativa in to see what that's like. Massive great brush on it. Huge great brush. I mean, if you've got small eyes, do not bother because you will not... I have trouble and I've got quite big eyes. Um, and I had trouble not getting that everywhere. But, there we go. What lippy was I going to choose? That's a very good question. I think 
I'll go for quite a neutral one. This is uh, Prime from Revolution and it's their um, bang on dope for Charlotte Tilbury's Pillow Talk. So you can see how creamy that is, that's just literally one swipe coverage. So there we go. This is my Halloween spoopy but subtle kind of... Well I guess I'm kind of batty so it seems appropriate that uh, I've got little black pats everywhere. Have you ever thought that technically Bats' wings are like fingers with membrane between them, so they fly by doing jazz hands. Okay, clearly my brain is going off on a completely different tangent right now. Uh, I need to go and get myself a coffee, apparently. <laughs> um, I really hope you enjoyed this, and uh, I hope that it's given you a little bit of inspiration, maybe, for a look you could do. Uh, if you're one of my 4F babies, please double check you're still subscribed. YouTube are still unsubscribing people all the time. It's crazy. <sighs> Even if I'm still in your suggested videos, there's a good chance that you're not subscribed to me anymore. So just double check that. Once you've done that, please go across and check out everyone that I've listed in the description box below. So that you can check out their films and see exactly what kind of spooky ooky look they have decided to do and which palettes they've used will anybody else have used this palette i wonder will anybody else be putting bats on their face who knows the only way to find out is to go across to their channels and check it out if you are here from one of the other channels, hi, hello, welcome. I'm not always this mad. Sometimes I'm worse. A lot of the times I'm worse. So if you think you can put up with that, it'd be awesome if you too would like to join the 4F family by hitting that subscribe button, liking, commenting, maybe even sharing the film. And if you're not sure, once you've watched all the films in the collab, I've got a lot of other films that you can watch to decide whether or not I'm your cup of tea or in my case cup of coffee which is not very British of me but I prefer coffee right all that remains for me to say as ever is you'll stay fabulously batty and I'll see you next time Bye for now.